turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 6 and we'll also be reading Matthew chapter 24, Genesis chapter 6. And if you can hold your finger in Matthew chapter 24, it will be on the screen, Genesis chapter 6. We will look at verses 5 through 8, and then we will go to Matthew chapter 24, and we'll take just one verse from there, and that's verse 37. Genesis chapter 6 reads, verse 5, And God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, that every imagination and thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him all in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both the man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I made them. Verse 8 says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now I'll switch over to Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24. And we will take one, uh, one verse out of that, Matthew chapter 24. And we will take just one verse from that. And that is verse 37, Matthew 24 and verse 37. And the Bible simply says this, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man B. I've entitled my sermon for this morning, The Days of Noah. Let's pray. Father, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. If I had dirt in my hands, I couldn't do much, but dirt in your hands, you can form Adam and breathe life into him. Loaves and fish in my hand couldn't do much, but loaves and fish in your hand, you could feed the hungry multitude. Mud in my hands would be a mess, but mud in your hands can give sight to the blind. A nail in my hand wouldn't mean anything, but a nail in your hand has meant everything. So I ask now, Lord, that you will take this sermon that I have in my hands that can only speak to ears. Put it in your hands and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. On last Sabbath, while we were all preparing to come to church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at 9.50 a.m., a man walked into the Tree of Life synagogue with an assault rifle and three handguns. By 9.57, 911 calls rang out that there were people there who were running and hiding, and there were a total reported of 30 shots heard. By 10.04, officers called for medics as one of the officers had been shot. By 10.12, another officer is wounded. By 10.29, the SWAT team entered the synagogue. The SWAT team entered the synagogue. By 1047, the suspect returned fire on the SWAT team. By 1056, uh, the SWAT team uh, uh, begins to uh, mediate with the shooter. By, 10, by 1103, they are negotiating with the suspect. By 10.08, the suspect is, suspect is heard saying, all these Jews need to die. By 10.13, the suspect is taken into custody after killing 11 
and injuring six. Just last Sabbath, the incident took an hour and 23 minutes. Last Sabbath, while we were in church. Three days earlier in Jefferson Town, Kentucky, a man tried to enter a predominantly black church uh, to go on a shooting rampage, but was unable to get in. So he went to a nearby grocery store and began shooting. Believe it or not, we are living in the days of Noah. Believe it or not, we are living in the days of Noah. And here we have this, this, this shocking story here in Genesis chapter 6. Here we are just three chapters after the fall of man. Here we are just just, just two chapters from, from uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Here we are. What, what are we doing here in the Bible? Just six chapters into man's story, and the Bible is telling us that God repents. Genesis chapter 6 starts this way. Uh, and it came to pass when the man began to multiply on the earth, uh, 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 the daughters were born unto them, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them as wives of, of all which they chose. Many people get mixed up with this, with this story. They've got all kinds of all kinds of theories, all kinds of, of scenarios. Who were these uh, uh, daughters of men and who were these sons of God? Some have come up with this unbiblical theory that somehow there were some, some angels who were, who were intermingling, who were, who were mating with, with humans and they were having offspring. The story is ridiculous. It has no scriptural basis. This is basically saying that God had his people and, 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 and there were those who, who chose to disobey God and they were, considered, they were considered children of men. These are, these are, these are children of, of, of Seth who, who follow God and, and then they were children of, of Cain who, who followed their own way and, and, and somehow even though these sons of God were dedicated to God, even though these sons of God were consecrated to God, uh, uh, they saw the women of the world and, and, and they saw the women uh, of men and they said they're, they're wonderful, they're, they're fine, they did, not, they did not base their choices on the simple fact that they were followers of God. They based them simply off of their beauty. I could preach a sermon about that. Be careful how you choose the person that you're with, but I don't have time this morning. Beauty fades, but one's walk with God is the true beauty. They found that these, these daughters, these, 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 these daughters of men, in verse 3 it says, uh, and the Lord saw all of this, and, and he says to them, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Verse 4 says they were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, and the same became mighty men, who were of old men, of renown. Verse 5 says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth. And if you don't see that the wickedness of man is great on the earth, just tune in to the local news station. Just turn on your TV. 
It's depressing sometimes. It seems like, like, like we're, 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 I'm, we're living Noah's day right now. People are harming old people and, 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 and they're harming children. Some man the other day was, was caught carrying, carrying his, his mother's corpse. He had been cut up and he's, he's carrying her around in a suitcase. It's evil continually. It seems that, that that's all they are doing, and, and it's wicked in my sight, and I, and I know that it's, that it's wicked in God's sight. Their hearts were evil continually. We're only six chapters into the Bible. And verse 6 says, And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God repents. Don't, don't, don't mistake this term because we're, we're familiar. If you, if you turn to Numbers, Numbers, chapter, uh, 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 Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, and, uh, 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 and it says this, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that, she had repent, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? For has he spoken, and shall not he make it good? Is, is Genesis 6... Uh, 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 contradictory to, to Numbers 23? And the answer is no. You must understand the meaning of this. God, God is not saying, I wish I could take it back. God is not saying, I repent, I made a mistake. God is not saying, I repent, I want to change my mind, I want to do over with this, this, this thing called humanity. The Hebrew meaning for the word repent in this context is simply this, and it sorrowed the Lord. God says, God says, after I'm seeing the choices that humanity is making and how hard these choices are on them, I'm sorry for my children. I'm sorry that the decisions that they are making are, 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 are causing them to feel this way. And God felt sorry for us. I'm sorry that, that wickedness is now their choice. I'm sorry that, 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 that all they can think about now is evil. All I wanted them to concentrate on was, 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 was love for God and love for one another, but, but look at what they've chosen. This was not the world I intended for them, and God repented. No, God never changes his mind, but he does change his ways. God never changes his mind, but he does change his ways for the purpose of man changing his mind. And so in verse 7 it says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I had made them. And verse 8 says, But Noah... But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Can we just clap our hands for Noah right now? Just, just. When you, when you get to heaven, I know you want to see the streets of gold and the, the gates of pearls, and I know you want to see your loved ones, and I know you want to see Jesus, but, but put Noah on the list. I want to see Noah. So, so when God has said, listen, I can't find no faith on the earth, but there's this guy named Noah. No, Noah, here's, how the, here's what the Bible says, says about Noah, that, that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And, and, and in verse 9, it says this, uh, and these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man.
my men in this church, that's your goal, to be a just man. If, if, if when the end of your life comes and, 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 and they're throwing dirt over your casket, let them say, here lies a just man. Not just a just man. Look at what the scripture says. He was just and he was perfect in this generation. And Noah was a man who walked with God. He found grace in the eyes of God and he walked with God. Sometimes the reason God cannot say that about us is because we are seeking for grace in the eyes of men and somehow, we leave God at church. Sometimes we, 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 we leave God at church. I'll be holy on Sabbath. I'll be just on Sabbath. I'll be perfect on Sabbath. But the Bible does not say that that was Noah's job. Noah walked with God. Maybe some of us need to be encouraged to take God by the hand and say, uh, uh, come with me, not just to Culver City Seventh-day Adventist Church. Come with me to my home and come with me to my job and, and, and come with me wherever I go. Noah walked with God. He was faithful. He was upright. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord Does God find grace in us? Does God find favor in Culver City? Although everything is wicked around him, God says, I'll give, I'll give this, this generation, I'll give this generation a, another chance. I'll, I'll do something because I found grace in the eyes of, of Noah. After this, the story of Noah becomes absolutely ridiculous. The following verses of chapter 6 says, God tells Noah to make an ark of gopher wood. Does anybody know what gopher wood is outside of this scripture? I didn't think so. Apparently, Noah must have known what gopher wood was. Then he comes to him and says, listen, I want you to build this ark. He gives him the measurements. The measurements in today's measurements would be the ark was one and a half football, football fields wide, long. One and a half football fields long and four stories high. If that's not crazy enough, Noah lives a hundred miles from the nearest part of the water. He's building a ship on dry land that's a football field and a half long and four stories high, and, it's, and, and, and he's a hundred miles from the nearest body of water. Okay, you don't think that's crazy. Let's keep going. It had never rained ever in the history of mankind. Read the Bible. What happened was there was water that came up from the ground. It was a dew that came up from the ground. So he's building this ark, a football field and a half wide, four stories high. He's 100 miles from the nearest body of water, and he has to tell these people God's going to make it rain. You're still not there. All right, not ridiculous enough for you? God then tells him, bring all of the animals into the ark, two by two, and I'm going to save those that are in the ark. Here is Noah building this huge ship, 100 miles from water. It's never rained, and he's to preach to these people God's going to send rain. Well, Noah, what is rain? 
Still not ridiculous. All right. Noah, bring in food for these so-called animals that are going to be in this ark with you, that are going to come two by two once this thing called rain starts to come down and I'm going to save the people. What do you do when God asks something ridiculous of you? When God tells you that person that's in the grocery store that you don't know, go up to them and ask them, do they need prayer? Who's doing it? One hand. <laughs> we don't want to look ridiculous. We don't want to seem ridiculous. We don't want to seem like this crazy person, but Noah is willing to be crazy for the Lord. And I don't know, I'm looking, I'm a crazy preacher, and so I'm looking for a crazy church. And if Cora City is willing to be ridiculous for God, because, because when God asks something ridiculous of you, it's because he's going to do something miraculous through you. This is absolutely ridiculous, and, and I got to give it to Noah because I don't think I could do it. Build the ark on dry land. The people are walking to you. Hey, Noah, what are you doing today? I'm, I'm building, a, I'm building a, an ark. I'm building a ship. Well, well what's an ark? Well, well God's going to send rain. Well, what's rain? Well, little drops are going to call. The little drops are going to come from the sky, and they're going to fill this whole place so much until it floods. No, Noah, Noah, what, you, what are you doing with all that food? You and your family are going to eat all of that stuff? Well, it's actually for the animals that are going to come. Animals? Yeah, they're going to come two by two, and they're what God told me. 120 years, Noah is preaching this. And for 120 years, he is the biggest comedy spectacle in the land. I, I, don't, I don't know if I, would have, if I would have done this. But verse 22, verse 22 of, of Genesis chapter 6, verse 22 simply says this, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so he did. So he did. I, 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 I can sometimes see God taking an aspirin after dealing with some of us. Here is the God of heaven, and he's begging and he's pleading some of us to just be obedient. It was disobedience that got us into this mess. It was disobedience that caused God to repent. But God found one who was willing to say, I'll go where you lead me, and I'll do what you say. It's very simple. Go where God says to go and do just what he says. Here's why Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord in his generation. No matter how ridiculous it sounds, no matter how it looked, Noah was willing to do exactly what God asked him to do. You see, when God asks something ridiculous of you, it is because he's about to do something miraculous to you, and Noah preaches for 120 years, it's going to rain. They mocked him. They called Noah a fanatic. Uh, 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 they, they did not heed the warning from this old man. Noah is now 600, about 600 years old. 
And we read this text all the time that, that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And we always talk about the wickedness that man was doing. But you must understand that, that there's a flip side to this coin. There's a flip side to the text. And that side to the text is, although the generations were wicked, the, uh, uh, the, the, the flip side is they did not heed the warning. And too many of us become callous to the things that are happening around us. But most of all, we become callous to the moving of God's Spirit on our hearts. We say we'll accept the message next week. I'll give my life another time. I'll wait till my family's here before I give my heart to the Lord. I'll wait till I find my soulmate. I'll wait till the next baptism. And the people are hearing a sermon every day, the same message, and they're not heeding the warnings. Yes, as it was in the days of Noah, there will be wicked people, but there will be stubborn hearts. There will be hearts that are unmoved by the message of repentance. God gave them every opportunity to get into that ark. God was there speaking through Noah. Ellen White says Jesus himself was speaking through Noah. For 120 years, how could God just destroy? He didn't just destroy the antediluvians. For 120 years, Jesus spoke through Noah, through Noah pleading with them, but God could not move their hearts. And here is this scene. <laughs> They're outside of the ark. Noah and his family have, have been building this thing. There are people who have, who have built the ark and who built the ark and, and helped, helped to build it who, who, who have since passed. And Noah is still constructing this thing. And they are there. And Noah comes out and he gives his message and he hears the mocking, the mocking, and, and, and they're laughing. And then, and, then, and then I can imagine in my preacher's imagination that as the crowd is there, uh, 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 all of a sudden they are parted by animals. Almost as if they have this, this, this sixth sense that, that they need to be inside. And so here you have two by twos and, and groups of seven that are parting the crowd of the people, and they're going into the ark. And White also says that, that, that at one point, the birds blackened the sky as they flew over their heads into the ark. The preaching didn't do anything, but, but, but one would have thought, if, if, you, if you saw two lions walking behind two lambs into the ark, something should have said, I need to be inside. If you saw a wolf walking behind two chickens, something would have said, God is doing something special here. When the sky is blackened by the birds above your head flying into the ark, and yet still nobody, nobody came, nobody went in. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. The animals are there. The food is there. Noah and his family now go in. It's only eight of them.
And then something that's, that's very striking, it, it's in Genesis chapter 7, 7 through 10. Genesis chapter 7, 7 through 10. I'm going to read that to you. You can play, Daniel. Genesis chapter 7, 7 through 10. The Bible says this, And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, uh, uh, and his sons, uh, his son's wife with him, into the ark, because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, there went in two by two unto Noah into the ark, and the male and the female, and, and, and God had, as God had commanded Noah. You got to see this scene. They're in the ark, and all of a sudden, a light from heaven, almost like an unseen hand, closes that big door of the ark. And look at this. They went in two by two, and God commanded Noah. And verse 10 says, And it came to pass after seven days. Talk about faith. Talk about grace in Noah. After they're in the ark with those smelly animals, they're there for seven days. Willing to look ridiculous for God. There's no rain. Nothing's happened. They're in there for seven days. And I can picture in that smelly ark with all those animals and all that food that when the Sabbath came, Noah is in there worshiping with his family. Favor and grace in the eyes of the Lord and faith, even though I had, I have, I have, they've never seen rain, even though nothing's happened, the floor's not come, they're in there for seven days. Noah is still faithful. May God give us that kind of faith. They're in the ark for seven days. And the waters came. When God asks something ridiculous of you, it's because he's about to do something miraculous through you. Those flood waters came. People started panicking. Ellen White paints a vivid scene that the animals that remain would, would walk up to the humans in panic as, as if they, they didn't know what to do. Some people strapped themselves to animals hoping that they would seek higher ground and that they could avoid the flood. Some tied themselves to trees at the top of cliffs hoping that they could avoid the flood, but they could not avoid it. 120 years of preaching, seeing the animals move and be saved, laughing at Noah were their last, were their last thoughts. And, and I've got to read Matthew 24, 37 through 39, so you, can, so you can really understand, yes, yes, the days of Noah were wicked, but, but, but the days of Noah were, were hearts that were not moved. 37 through 39 says, But as in the days of Noah, where so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah uh, uh, were before the flood, they were eating and they were drinking and they were marrying and they were given into marriage unto the day that Noah entered the ark. It was business as usual. They were planning for next year and next Christmas and, and God is saying, now is the time. Verse 39 says that, and they not until the flood came, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Yeah, things were wicked and things were bad. But the hearts of man were closed. That big football field and a half ship, four stories high, was not meant to hold only eight people. Will you go in? Will you go in? This text is saying when God comes again, it's going to be the same way. And my question to you is, will you go in? Will God find grace in you? Will you be one who walked with God? Or do you just leave him here on Sabbaths? Will you go in? The ark was not meant for eight 